Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Human Performance Outliers podcast with Zach Bitter. Yeah, you've definitely got a lot of fire irons in the fire, I would say. <laughs> So I'm always curious about kind of how that all plays out because a lot of times these things feed into one another, but at the same time, they're unique enough where they require their own amount of focus. And, you know, you have hate your apparel brand. Um, you have your YouTube channel. Now you're going to be doing the, the Indian bicycle thing and everything else that's going on in your life. Uh, did that stuff, was that stuff already kind of developed when you were doing the Highland Games or was that kind of a product of the awareness that was kind of given to you through the Highland Games? So it, it really built very organically. Um, you know, I started filming throwing training and lifting like on a flip cam to share with the other 10 idiots doing the thing that I'm doing because <laughs> we don't have any other person to reference. There's no coaching. So we're all trying to figure it out. And so we're sharing everything we can. Um, Somehow I end up turning that into writing a blog. Mm -hmm. And so writing a blog, talking about travel and the sport and training. And, you know, I made a caber out of a bunch of two by sixes and shared that information um, and started building a little bit of a following. And so uh, prior to my first season as a pro, I wrote a book on how to train for the games because I didn't think there was any great information out on it or any. And so that, did well enough and then one of the things I wrote about in the book was the hate which was kind of my own mantra of why I'm driven to do what I do and it's yeah, I don't tolerate my own bullshit mm -hmm. you know I I'm I want to find those weak parts of me and hunt them down and get rid of them you know those are drag those are things slowing me down in the system and I want to keep moving forward as fast as I can and I got to be willing to acknowledge those weak spots of like whether my diet's not good enough or my routine isn't good enough or I'm not taking care of of all the things I can control. Mm -hmm. And so that turns into selling some shirts. Uh, and at some point there filming training and stuff, I start talking to the camera, which then turns into vlogging and did that for a couple years on a daily basis while all in it before really winning any world championships. Uh, and then continued the whole time. I've just never stopped. Once once I started doing any of the things, whether it was YouTube, podcast, um, making content or shirts, I, I knew the rule that athletics had given me about getting good at a thing, and it takes 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so I can't expect there to be anything different for the next chapter. Like, yo, if you want mastery, we better start sowing those seeds now because this will be done and we shouldn't, just stop one to start the next. Let's right. keep some transition in between the few things. And so I just never quit doing any of those as they've also been great. Like I've been able to make a living uh, on my own since 2017 doing the things I do. And seems to be, there's enough of them that, yeah. that equal a job that, that pay well enough that I get to live the life I want to. Yeah. No, I hear you. I think with uh, the parallels between Highland games and ultra marathon running is that they're fun careers. You can probably make a living doing, if you're good enough, you can make a living doing just that while you're doing it. But then as soon as that day ends and if it ends with an injury, it's a little abrupt and you know, you can't predict that and you have to have another option in place, ready to go that can pay the bills essentially. So it's not like the NFL, the NBA or anything <laughs> no, like that. There's where, no retiring. Right. Yeah. You play, you play three or three to five years and you could live modestly the rest of your life off your pension. It's like, that's not the case. I'm guessing with the Highland Games. No, as a professional Highland Games guy and being one of the best in the world the whole time I did it and competing probably the most often of any athletes um, at 20 times a season or whatever it was for that whole stretch, like my best years, I'm making somewhere between 25 and 30 grand mm -hmm. and <clears throat> there's expenses, mm -hmm. but I've got a good job at the time doing outside sales that pays well. And so I, I guess I had enough, you know, forethought to think making a little bit of money with this Highland games thing is sure sweet. Mm -hmm. I should probably figure out a way, whether it's selling these books or programming for the Highland games that helps some money keep coming in whenever I'm done throwing just to ease that transition back yeah. into whatever my normal salary is. And it just kept growing. And now that's what I do for a living and don't bother with the other side of work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. I think, uh, you know, there's always interesting people or people interested in these niche sports, as long as you're able to kind of put stuff out there. And it sounds like you maybe were one of the first 
people to really start leaning into more of the, the modern side of things where you have virtual like YouTube and that sort of stuff. I, I just always think about with ultra running, there was a guy, Anton Kropitka, who he, uh, he won a bunch of races in like a first few years when I first got into the sport, but he would do this blog and he would just document like his training. And it was just like such a detailed and just had a way of kind of describing it that it just attracted people to it where they want to like almost live a through him. I can just imagine like these like 30 to 40 year old guys, like sitting in their office job, just like imagining that they were out there in the mountains running around like he was. So they'd read his blog and he got really popular from that. And that kind of fed into the other channels and things like that. And it's like, it, it's just, I think being authentic and true to yourself and telling that story can go a long ways. But when you yourself looks at it, you're like, well, this is just basic stuff I'm doing. Why do people care? It's kind of hard. I think sometimes to, to appreciate for someone who has no clue how much of a resource that can be. I, I still wonder, look, man, I don't know why I'm getting to do a motorcycle trip with Indian. I threw rocks in a field that people agreed <laughs> to measure. Like one doesn't equal the other, you know, but it's all the same path. You know, the, the world championships for me are, they're a nice foot in the door to talk to people. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have anything to say other than that, once you're in the room, that's a nice one meeting. And so you may as well have some other stuff you're interested in other things. And for me, I've, I've just got a wide variety of interest. I like camping. I like doing outdoor stuff. I like travel. I like art. I like doing tons and tons of different things. Yeah. You're a curious mind. Big time. So the podcast is great for that. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. You can explore a lot. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the human performance outliers podcast with Zach Bitter. 